GDP, GNP, and GNI. Wow, if these concepts are confusing you, I'm here for your rescue. So let's begin. GDP or the gross domestic product is a concept that many of you might already be knowing. I'll just reiterate it. It's the total value of goods and services produced within the boundaries of this nation. Whether they are produced by the nationals or by foreigners, that's not a concern. As long as it is produced with the dint of land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, the four factors of production. All right. So then we have GNP. In order to understand that, let's first clarify two concepts, factor income and transfer payment. Factor income, well, if you give some goods or service, if you give some labor and you get some income in return, that is factor income. So if you go to your office, you get some wages, or if you lend some loans and you get some interest, or if you run a business, you earn some profit, or if you leased out a land, you get some rent, all of these are factor incomes. On the other hand, we have transfer payments. If you go down the road, and someone hands you 100 bucks for no good rhyme or reason, that's a transfer payment. If someone gives you a gift or donation, that's a transfer payment. If a police officer charges you fine, or even if someone sells you a second-hand item, that's also a transfer payment because no new good or service is being produced. And this transfer payment is neither a part of GDP nor GNP, so I'm not going to talk about this. Factor income is. Now consider this nation A. Its nationals are spread all across the world. We also have some foreigners living in Nation A. So the factor income that these nationals earn from different parts of the world and send back to the country A, well, that's, let's, let's consider that as N, all right? And then we have the factor income F of these foreigners living in A, earning in A, and then sending back to their native land. Let's consider this as F. This N minus F is known as the net factor income from abroad. And if you add this to the GDP, you get GNP. So the basic concept behind this is that you have the nationals of this nation A spread all across the world. And the country A thinks that, so what if these people have gone out of our country? Because they are a product of our country. They are the sons of the soil. They have been born and brought up and educated here. And then they have gone to work in some other country. So their income... Uh, so long as they are sending it back to our country, should be considered as part of the GNP. And therefore, it captures a wide variety. And factor income doesn't include wages alone, it also includes interest payments. So if the country A has lent out a lot of loans and is getting back the interest, that is also coming in this NFIA. If the corporates of this country are spread all across the world and they are earning profits, sending a part of it back to the country A, that will also count in NFIA. So NFIA has a lot of components, but for a country, NFIA might be positive, NFIA might be negative, it depends on a lot of factors. All right, if you have a lot of foreign companies working in the country A, then the NFIA might be effectively negative. So. I'm giving you a personal opinion and this by no means is a general theory, but I believe that why do uh, economists and political analysts and many people still regard GDP as more important an indicator for the growth and development of a country than GNP? It's because somewhere down the line, if you see, then GDP truly reflects the infrastructural growth, the structural reforms in the country A. If the nationals of the country A go all across the world, they are earning something and they are sending it back to their mother country, that doesn't reflect the roads, the bridges, the ports, the infrastructure development in this country or the job market or the job ecosystem in this country or the structural reforms in this country. It might mean that this fellow, this national is qualified but he's not getting enough opportunities in this country and that's why he's gone abroad. So. In order to truly assess the level of development of a country, economists still consider GDP, they consider this NFIA as something close to a transfer payment. The country A is getting remittances, not because of its development, but because some of its nationals happen to be very talented. But this is my opinion, and uh, it's written nowhere. So I just wish to share it as a perspective, which might help you understand this topic even better. Now is the concept of national income or gross national income. Wow. It's the income from all four factors of production 
and whereas GDP or GNP is the value of the goods and services produced, this is income earned. But economists and especially OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, has defined GNI as equal to GNP, that is GDP plus NFIA. So many of them don't agree. For example, uh, some economists say that if you subtract the depreciation from GNP, you get something called NNP, the net national product. And there are two ways in which you can count it, either at factor cost or at market price. I've already discussed this in one of my videos. And uh, if you consider the factor cost, then it is the wholesale price of the goods and services right out of the factory floor. So it doesn't include taxes, it doesn't include subsidies. So that is NNP at factor cost. If you consider this value, that is GNI. Some economists say that as well. And if you divide it by the population, you get uh, the income per capita. But I'll stick to GNP as the national income. Now, this national income has two components, private income and government income. So government income is earned by the government sector and that includes the wages and salaries of the government employees as well as transfer payments made by the government such as social security benefits, unemployment insurance and others. Everything else is private income. This private income can further be broken down into two components, personal income and corporate profits. Now, corporate profits also includes the taxes, the corporate tax that a company pays. It includes, of course, the income that the corporations earn from their economic activities, but the part of it that they share as dividends to the shareholders, because they've shared, it's not included within this bracket, it's included in personal income. So personal income also includes everything else, everything that you and me are earning, not as part of corporates, but as individuals. Well, this personal income, when you remove the direct taxes, you get something called the personal disposable income. So you have the personal income of a nation and you remove the direct taxes, you get the personal disposable income. That's the amount of money that the individuals of a nation really have to spend on goods and services. Now all of these values are nationwide numbers. National product, national income, private income, personal income, all of these are nationwide numbers. If you divide them by the population of the nation, you arrive at per capita figures. And for example, the per capita income or the per capita GDP, which is often used in a lot of economic discussions and debates. Now, I'm not in a habit of stretching anything further. So I've made the video as crisp as possible. Brevity is the soul of wit. Find out your own understanding of this topic and do subscribe to Beacon. Thank you.